Hey, Composing Gloves here. Today in Citrus, we're going to talk about envelopes. Why envelopes get their own video? Because they are complicated things. Now, we have digital envelopes. Digital envelopes, th this is going to be a huge weapon for you, and I just want to cover it in detail. So, digital envelopes are really cool because they we can do anything we want, really. We can even make arpeggiators in this one. So, it's used as an arpeggiator. Now, Analog Land... Thing, there were rules like there were four stage ADSR envelopes, attack, decay, sustain, release envelopes. And so we're going to look at that scenario first. But there were timbres that, because of these limitations, uh, just could not exist. So they've since rectified the issue using digitally controlled envelopes and other options available to us. But it was just hard to engineer things that would allow us to create certain types of contours. Now, uh, what is an envelope? An envelope allows us to control a parameter and tell it how to behave, whether or not to turn on or off. Now, I've got it linked up right now on operator one to control the volume. So envelope, that's what the EMV stands for, and volume. Now, this this right here, my master, my volume right here, this controls the maximum, the maximum value. So whatever this will set my maximum value. This is the zero, it's always zero. So it's just the bottom. So right now it's off. If I turn it on, I click this little box right here, it turns on, and bang, we are now in action. This is a basic four-stage ADSR envelope. Now, it's not technically an ADSR envelope, which I've, I recently read this big old long thing about envelopes and the different kinds, and I'm not going to bore you with, with all like the history of envelopes, but it is, a, it is kind of a, it was an eye-opener for me as far as what things did. So I'm going to talk about how to navigate and sort of use this thing and generate some contours, and we're going to talk about arpeggiators and the options down here, and then after that, we should be good to go. And okay, so what's going on here? Well, first off, we've got our signal. It turns on. And I'm going to talk about adding points and creating curves, but first you need to get a general grasp of envelopes. So it turns on. So our signal, it turns on like so. Now, then it decays. This is the decay point. It starts with a D. This decay point could actually be lower. The ability to move this point is one thing that makes it a not ADSR envelope. So, um,. Well, the, uh, no, 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 that's not true. It's the ability to move a point after that. That This certainly is not an ADSR anymore. But in ADSR, you technically can't decay up. But anyways, your sound comes, it reaches its max, it decays down, it reaches a point where it sustains, it stays there. So it hangs out there, it's like chilling. I don't know what it's doing, but it's, it's doing something there. And then it releases. Doo -doo -doo. And after you, so this is, you hit the note, at the sustain, when you let go of the sustain, it releases and it will give us a little ring. If I move this out, that little ring out is controlled by this. So that's your basic attack, decay, sustain, release, envelope. Now, this this could do so much more. It does a million times more. Like this is this is utterly ridiculous what this can do. So uh, first, we should understand a few things. So you can add points simply by right clicking. You can delete points by right clicking and selecting delete. You can snap, we see we have a grid here, and you can snap to grid using this little mag magnet down here. It's the, it's the magneto icon, and so you put it down. If you turn it off, you can put points wherever. Now let's say we add a bunch of points we don't want. We can select the pencil tool, right click, and just drag over them, and they'll disappear really fast if you've got a lot of points that are an issue. Now uh, we can also draw points just with the pencil tool. And we get, we get that. So this is a case where you'd want to delete a bunch of them. Now, what are some other issues that we can face with this? Okay, so snap. Snap is we can... We'll have our pencil tool snap to the grid, which is really cool. We have slide. So let's say we put a point here. Let's put snap to grid back on. By the way, if a point's off and you turn snap to grid on, when you click the point, it'll snap to the nearest point on the grid. So... When we move the points back and forth, we notice that the points before are unaffected, points after it move. If we turn this off, it will move in between the points. Really cool. Let's say this is the exact, this is our dream envelope. This is exactly what we wanted. Well, we could freeze it, and now we can no longer manipulate or change it. That way it is protected from further interference. Maybe a useful feature for you if you're doing something that's kind of touchy and you're a little sketch about what's going to happen. So I'm going to delete this and... All right, so let's talk about some of the other envelope types you can have. So when we right click between two points, you can create a variety of curves. You see we have a curve where we can move a bevel up and down. We could right click and get like a double curve. And when you right click, you have all these options. And I'm going to let you just experiment with those. But the one that I want to do mention, there's pulse and wave. On wave, it looks, sometimes it'll come out like this and it'll look like there's no way to manipulate this. But if you put your cursor in the middle, there will be a bevel that you could drag up and down to manipulate that. So that's wave. 
Now I'm going to delete that point and I'm going to switch my thing back to single curve, which is great. All right, so what are some other envelopes we can create? Well, we noticed that these points can be assigned. Whoops, let me go back to single curve. These points can be assigned to be a ADSR selection. So we can assign them values that are associated with our now somewhat elementary understanding of ADSR envelopes. So we can make this the decay point. So this, this is the decay point. Now again, this is sort of arbitrary. It's just a point really, just a marker because you can't decay up. That's like the opposite of the word decay. Oh yeah, I decayed. And when I decayed, I technically increased. Like, nah, that's not true. So it's just a esoteric term from back just being nice. Memorable term, maybe not esoteric is not the right word. So we have our decay. And we can assign another point to be our decay. Decay. Now, you can only have one decay. Just so you know. You can only have one of those. And as we go, as we go along here, we have this sort of in-between area. Let's say we want to let well, let's uh let's stop right here. Let's talk about sustain real fast. So if I had a point, I can make this my sustain point. You can only have one of those. Another note. A sustain point is also by definition a loop in. So if we make a loop, our sustain will be the end of that loop. So guaranteed that's going to be the end. So whatever. So if we want to start a loop, we could come over here and make loop start. Or I could put my loop start over here instead. And you see it changes and it's represented with a little L. That's really nifty. Now, let's say we want to make some sort of a, a, a loop thing on our volume. We want to control volume, make our volume go like don't, 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 don't. You know, like something like get a typical massive type sound, massive performer feature for all you massive people out there. So I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to use my snap to grid option and I'm simply going to, oops. Oh, uh, by the way, you cannot undo changes on, on here. I just, I just tried to do it, which I knew that beforehand. So if you click that and you want to undo it, you could go to undo add point or you go to undo history and change you, as you can see with this little arrow down here. So that's how you undo things here. Uh, don't, I don't know why they're separate, but they are. Okay, so usually the undo is easier to do manually with this type of a thing. But, okay, so I, I want my sustain to be out here. So I want it to do that four times, and then I want it to repeat, right? So I'm going to come to my sustain value. I'm going to make sustain loop end. I'm going to make it this point at the top. And I'm going to make my decay point at the beginning, my loop start. Now it'll loop through. See, it's quite a fast loop. And what I could do is I can make it tempo synced. So I just bang. You see my grid just changed sort of its dynamics. And I may want to refocus everything on the grid. So we'll move these things over. I realize I skipped these knobs. We're getting to them. So now, whoops. Well, yeah, you can do cool stuff. So, okay. It's linked to my tempo. So if I wanted to create some sort of a nifty modulation thing, one thing you can do is you can come down here. You can... Uh, copy state, so we copy the envelope. We can come over to two, modulate two by one. Again, watch my FM series. And let's say I want two to have that same effect. I say, so I'm gonna go on, I'm gonna paste state, bang, envelope all there. I don't have to do any extra work remaking that because you see it could be quite tedious. I could turn envelope one off. So now it's gonna be a straight tone. Y2 gets this sort of, this special treatment. And as I play it now, that's pretty quick. Let's, oh well, let's take it slower. And we can make one a lower tone. So anyways, you can do cool stuff. As you can see, there's there's the power here. So let's come back to our one. We got our cool our cool thing going on here. So we can tempo again. What does global do? Uh it says up here. It says retrigger. What does that mean? Well, when you're playing, when you're playing, uh, this will become, let's talk about ARPS. This is really great with ARPS. This makes a lot more sense with ARPS. So, okay, let's go to a default patch because this is, I just wanted to start off from blank slate. So we have operator one, volume, envelope. Do, 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 do. I wonder if it always opens up on the window you're on. So we click a, we click a thing on and we want it to be an ARP. What is an ARP? Well, an ARP is one of those things that goes one of those. But let's say we want to just be able to push the notes and have it do that for us. It's a classic sound. So, okay, well, first, I want my ARP to start right here. And we're going to do a basic ARP to start. And I want it to do something like this. Again, I want one of these, except for I'll put two spaces in between. And I want it to loop 
So I'm going to go loop start. And on my sustain is by default loop in. And you see it turns green, indicating where your loop is. And that, that's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool thing. Yeah, I dig it. So, okay. Now, how do we make it an arc? Well, you come over here. And at, the, at these peaks, I want my notes to change. So I want my note to go. I want it to play my previous note, my same note, and then my next note. Uh, let me alter a few things here. I want this to be my loop start. You can see things are starting to happen. All right, now let's change this value to be high up in the air. Yes. All right, I've just screwed myself over. That's what I just did. So how do you fix this? You just do something like that. We're gonna make this a loop start. That's just getting too confusing. All right, so we've got these two things. I got a, I got a little two thing. I could extend this out and add a third one. Let's add two more. In fact, to this, because I think it'll be better. You see, we're just short of a full measure, so it's going to be a little bit off on our timing wise, but I don't care. So, so what do we do? So we come over to our, our loop and we say, I want this to play the same note. So I hit my chord, whatever it perceives as the first note, it's going to play that note. Then I want it to play the next note and my chord, the next note and the next note. And I want to play the previous note here. So you see, we've now created an envelope. Now I have like butchered the snot out of this. So let's create something a little more simple. So let's make this the loop start. I'm gonna have a fade in. On my loop, I want it to have a, I want it to play the next note. And then I want it to switch between the three notes on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna make this play the previous note and my chord. So a triad, it needs a chord. It won't work without a chord. Then the same note. And now it's looping through my stuff right here. Now let's say I wanted to play the next note instead. And this restarts my loop. So this is the beginning. So if I wanted to go do, 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 I need to add one more. And we'll make that next. And it's a little weird because I have this thing going on over here. So I've already got it on next. I'm going to delete this. Have it do something like that. Do this. As you can see. It's a mess. Now there's easier ways to do this because I can see it's pretty easy to get yourself confused here and I could spend a long time here trying to do crap. However, there are much easier ways to do this. Now, if we go over here to open state file on this little arrow down here, they already have a bunch of ARPs that you can just manipulate from there that have a lot of these basic things already set up for you. And you can create your own and save it and put it in here. So I'm going to go to a simple one, two, three, one, two, open that up. And so, and you see that's way easier. It sounds sort of like the pegboard nerds of fire in the hole. I believe that's the one. Yeah, it does. Okay. So, now we can manipulate and we can do, you know, whatever the junk we want. As you see, that's a million times easier than that. All that jazz I was showing you earlier, which wasn't a great demonstration of skill, but it got the job done. So, okay. Now, what is the deal with the global knob? Well, if I turn this on, it's tempo synced, but every time I hit a note, it's going to trigger its own sequence. And as a result, we're going to get out of time really fast. I'm going to hit this note. It's going to start going. And then I'm going to hit the next note and it's going to start going. And the first note's going to keep going. So if you didn't hear it perfectly in sync, it's going to be out of sync. As you can see, it's a glorious thing. So global will re-trigger the envelope every time you hit a note and triggers are a whole nother topic, but it will re-trigger the envelope so that it will continue to play in sync, perfect sync. So things will restart at the same point. And contrast without global. And see that's, and I'm, I'm deliberately trying to be a little bit off. But even if you were trying to be on, you'd probably end up with something that would it'll get off eventually because you're not perfect. So that's that. Now let's talk about these knobs right here. 
All right, so we have these attacks, decay, sustain, release. Well, we've talked about how we can put in points here. And are these absolute points? No, they're points on a grid relative to something. So as a result, everything's going to be relative to something else. Right now, it looks like it's an absolute relationship. But it's actually relative to another envelope that's controlling this envelope. It's, it's a little weird. So... And this is on like this stuff sort of unnecessary, but you will find yourself adjusting some of these things just in your workflow. Although you could theoretically just work with this. But uh, if you move your attack, let's say, so we know this is our attack phase and we've defined it as our attack phase. If we move it like that, it'll snap back. And it looks like it just snapped back. But if I play it, it instantly attacks. If I put it back to where it was, it plays the way it looks. This is just relative to positions. There, are, in some cases, you're going to want to do this, believe it or not. But uh, most of the time, you probably won't, but in some cases, you will. Now, there was one other thing. There was another thing I wanted to show you uh, about this. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's delete all these points. Boo, 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 boo. If you want to create, so when our envelope is off, it's a gate. So you push it, it holds, and then it lets go. But how do you create... And we've talked about sequences and release sustain a sustain value. And we've talked about loops with envelopes. So we've, we've got quite a knowledge. We could create most textures. But what if we want a one shot? What if we want, so again, turn it off. When you hit the note, it'll play. When you let go, it'll stop. It's really simple. But what if we want a one shot envelope where it plays through the whole envelope regardless of when we let go of the key? If we hit the key, it triggers the whole envelope. And there are times you'll want this, maybe for like drum samples or things like that. Uh, maybe in a sequence you're doing something complicated. So what you do is you turn it on and you simply do not add any, you don't assign any ADSR stuff to it. So now when I play this, it'll play it. As you can see, it's a one shot. I recently got involved with this chord progression I really liked. No, it was this one. It goes... Dun, dun. Was it C sharp minor? I don't even remember. So, okay, anyways, you can see we can create any kind of envelope. This is the freaking envelope of envelopes. Now, there are more, there are yet more choices. You may be like, more choices? Are you joking? Yeah, I know. I wish I was, but I'm not. So, here we go. We have our undo button down here, by the way, too. Really nifty. And the freeze. I already talked about this, so I'm good. Okay, so we can open up files, and you can see they already have some. You actually, an envelope, when we get to Portamento, it's going to become very important that we understand what that is. And you can preview it, by the way. If you come over here, you can you can move this thing off to the side. You can see what it's going to do. And they have a whole bunch. You can create your own and create some really cool things. Now, we have save state file, so you could save it and put it in there. You could copy it. We already showed an example of moving it over. We have load, undo, load state. You can undo a load, which is a, a pretty unique undo option. So you can make all loop. And the whole thing will loop. No shocker there. And so I'm going to undo that. Do, do, do. Okay, so we have insert points at markers. This thing's been grayed out every time I've looked at it. Um, I'm not sure how to add a marker. I'm not sure if this is like a marker. I'm not sure what the deal is there. So that's something that, that I just don't have knowledge on. Just don't know what that does. We can flip it vertically. And so it'll inverse our envelope. How cool is that? Um, we have scale levels. Now scale levels, a lot of these things I'm just going to let you touch, but it will move all the things in proportion to each other according to a graph. So we can multiply, um, we can center, we can center it, and then we can level it out. We can make it zero. We can leave it where it was. And we can even do apply an offset to it. Now these, these things, you might be wondering, what do you want these things for? Well, the main reason you'd use these is you want to be weird. That's, that's it. And unless you have something really particular you're after, these things are then invaluable to you. But for the basic sound designer, they're going to look at these things and say, these things are worthless to me. Like, when do I, when will I ever use that? Well, the answer is when you're getting creative. So get more creative. Um, let's look at this. I had a popcorn seed in my tooth. So the scale levels, we already talked about that. Okay. We have decimate points. Now, I recently learned in sample rate terms. So let's say you've got a bunch of points. Uh, let's turn the, that off. Let's say it's got way too many points. You don't want that many points. Well, you can come in here and click decimate points. And you can set a threshold for how many points you want decimated. So if we turn it up, we get a lot more blocking. When we turn it down, we get more. And that's what decimate points does. However, I recently learned in digital audio, your sample rate decimation is when you remove some multiple of the sample rate. So if you have like an oversampling of 256 and then you decimate it to 155, it'll remove... It'll leave one point. It'll decimate all 250, every 
250, sorry about this. It'll do a point and it will decimate 255 points and do another point and we'll do that, that's decimation. However, here, as you can see, it's a little bit different. Um, yeah, it's an interesting thing. I just read it and I was like, oh, that, that's cool. We have filters, so you can filter, you can essentially apply a smoothing and various other options. And you can also apply decimation here. And you can even use an impulse. This uses an impulse response. So it's basically doing convolution on your signal. I wouldn't worry about this, Jazz. If you have no idea what I just said, I wouldn't even worry about it. Don't even like touch it. Like you don't need to for, for most things. This is like this is like crazy jazz. So we have smooth up. You gotta read more books on DSP if you wanna understand some of that. Uh, we have attack, smooth, so we can, again, all these things are just various ways we can manipulate our changes here. Now we can do smooths, which will take away all the abrupt changes. We can go after abrupt changes specifically, and you see it's an automatic. If it does what you like, then that's cool. Otherwise, not cool. Now, the things that are important in here. So we could turn all points smooth, and it will smooth. It will make everything a curve. But we can create a sequence. As you can see here, we get this step editor, and we can add the length of some versus others, so we can change the length. You can right-click to delete something and make it a longer thing. And you can change the gate, which will, as you can see, move the value, so you'll get like a da -da 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 versus a da-da-da-da-da type deal. Um, we could change the sustain. This stuff is pretty self-explanatory. You can change the attack, so you can have them ramp in, like wah 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 type deal. I know my scene is so much better than me actually playing it. You can apply an offset, a swing, and a time multiplier. So you can change the grid behind it, the resolution you have. And now you can change which notes. This is the way I recommend creating um, custom arpeggios is you can go up two notes, up a note. You can stay the same, go down. So you can do that, and you can set it up here very intuitive. You can change the attack level. You can change the decay slope on particular, um, particular notes. Sustain, release slope. You can randomize it and humanize it which is like randomize only nicer it's not as it's like smaller changes and you can randomize the whole thing right here like it's great except for these settings and we go to ping pong ping pong what that does is it will go back and forth back and forth back and forth whereas normal it will go do 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 and then back to the beginning do 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 back to the beginning so ping pong it's like ping pong back forth back forth if you have any questions about this, let's create, you know what, before we finish this, let's create an actual, like some useful stuff. So we've talked about quite a bit. You already know quite a bit and you haven't even gotten to the global menu because this stuff is where the sound design happens. And you know about the routing, so you don't need to worry about that. So we're gonna take one, we're gonna output it. Let's say I wanna create a cool pluck sound. So I'm gonna turn that on. Uh, and on, on our pluck, it's not plucking. Oh, dir pluck for your information. Dir pluck. I don't know why I just said Durgan. Pluck needs a spectrum because it does high, it does dampening. So if, well, in the sine wave, you're not going to get anything. So let's go back and let's make a pluck with the sine wave. We're going to use a volume envelope. I'm going to adjust the tack up. I'm going to take the decay, bring that in, take the sustain down, and bring the release out. We got a nice pluck, and it deceptively looks like we didn't do anything. Like I love it. So. This is what I do in all my presets to confuse the living crap out of whoever downloads them. So if we turn on our second operator, we can add some high harmonic stuff. We'll do like ratio of four. And we're gonna make this one a pluck sound. We're gonna decay it quite a bit faster. No. I'm gonna bring this up even closer. Whoops, did not mean to do that. I'm gonna click my undo button down here. Root of the pencil, snapper tool. I haven't talked about the effects, so I'm staying away from the effects, but you definitely reach for reverb at this point. Uh, we have, let's do one of these. Oh yeah, that's that's a beautiful thing right there. Let's make it, let's do something like this. I use the actual envelope this time. Let's go to four, let's output four. Let's make four a ratio of one. And let's offset it. Let's mute these. And let's make this a, um, a similar envelope shape. 
I want a longer, let's bring the sustain and have a longer decay on this one. That sounds pretty okay. Sounds kind of harmonic. We may need to go in there and change that later. A ratio of one, so it stays the same. It's getting a little muddy, so let's bring it in. Let's make these both ratios of four. So that they're the same. Oh, well, that's my issue. One's two and one's, here we go. Whoops, we got something weird going on here. Let's bring this to one. Let's do this one. That sounds pretty good. No, it doesn't, but <laughs> I don't have the patience to keep messing with this because there are other methods I would use to probably achieve a sound that I would like more chord wise. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day. Thank <laughs> you.